Ça y est, bien arrivé à Bombay et prête à croquer à pleines dents la première étape de notre tour. Bombay, cette ville fascinante pour sa diversité et bouillonnante de culture. L'occasion parfaite de rentrer en douceur dans le rythme indien, découvrir ses habitants et ses lieux. Dans Food Sales Tour, il y a food. Et ça tombe bien, parce que Bombay est une ville qui se découvre dans la rue, et notamment par la nourriture qui est préparée sans interruption, du matin jusqu'au soir. Vous pouvez compter sur nous pour nous prêter au jeu de tout goûter, et même de mettre la main à la pâte. Vous l'aurez compris, la ville se prête bien à notre quête, redonner du sens à l'alimentation. Bombay, c'est aussi la rencontre des traditions et de la modernité culinaire. Un exemple Les Devawala. En hindi, ce sont ceux qui livrent des boîtes. On a pu observer une organisation géniale et pointilleuse qui permet à plus de 175 000 personnes de manger du fait maison. Les repas livrés sont faits par les propres familles des clients et acheminés à vélo jusqu'au bureau. Chercher des solutions pour une alimentation saine en ville, beaucoup de personnes s'y sont essayées. Mais c'est l'initiative de Green Souls qui nous a tout de suite plu. Qui a dit que rien ne poussait en ville wanted to start their own kitchen gardens, wanted to grow their own food and so they came together and whatever spaces they got, they started growing them. We also check what are the resources locally available. We always create our own soil and uh, so every time even when we have our workshops, the, the main topic of our workshop is soil building. So because that's where it all starts from. And we also have a principle that we don't uh, take soil from the forest, which is what everybody does. It's easily available in nurseries and shops. Uh, we don't do that because we don't want to destroy a patch of forest to build our own garden. So that's why we uh, do composting. And we follow permaculture or natural farming. That has been our fundamental uh, resource of knowledge. Nothing works in straight lines. Even in nature, if you see, the, there has to be curves and edges because a lot of activity happens on these curves and edges. So instead of uh, lining our pots in straight line, uh, what we have done is we have uh, gathered them together in a cluster and then we have uh, enclosed it with cardboard boxes. Now, this has been our experience for the last six months that cardboard boxes uh, degenerate, so they add to the soil. They are completely natural and they attract a lot of earthworms. Plus, uh, they are porous, so they hold a lot of water and they provide a lot of aeration for the roots. So the development of plants in cardboard boxes uh, is much, the vitality is much more than in plastic pots. We grow herbs, flowering plants and vegetables. Uh, we have a lot of variety of all three. That's because we believe in keeping the biodiversity alive. like an open school and gardening has a lot of aspects. It has maths and world science and world geography and world. So uh, the children are not put in a classroom and you know let 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 you know they're not allowed to learn only on their imagination. They can actually see things happening over here. Uh, and 
we've also observed that um, they start taking a lot of interest and there's a lot of behavioral change in these children as well so from aggressive to curiosity to understanding and then to compassion so these things are there then biology like uh, how does a plant drink water how does a plant eat food make its own food uh, so these kind of things are always taught through an activity so we don't emphasize a lot on uh, you know learning we emphasize a lot on doing first the sun's come on the sun's heat comes on the plant then the plant make their food the worms come and eat the plant's food then the plants make for us food vegetables then we eat the food what is this is a cycle of plant a chain if a chain breaks if sun comes it plants and if worms do will be the chain will break individuals can also start we don't need to wait for somebody to come save us right so i think we are not fighters we are farmers we just want to grow as much as we can organic food and we want more and more people to get involved in this because if that happens then there probably won't be a need there will be no market for the chemical fertilizers or for the gm so by itself they will get eradicated trouble so hard L'agriculture urbaine nous a montré comment, en observant son environnement, on pouvait retrouver un peu d'autonomie alimentaire en produisant sa propre nourriture au cœur de la ville. Les rencontres, on s'est rendu compte que cette question d'autonomie était bien relative. Pour certains, être autonome passe par un retour au basique, un retour à la nature. On a entendu parler d'un éco-architecte qui a tout quitté pour construire sa ferme sur ses terres natales du Maharashtra. Sa définition de l'autonomie Se loger et se nourrir de façon naturelle et par ses propres moyens. Uh, we are doing a work with the eco uh, materials like bamboo mud stone sand grass so basically it's coming from nature and when we don't want to use that if we destroy it it's going into the nature again so that's mean this is a cycle le matériau le plus utilisé pour la construction des maisons indiennes la bouse de vache concentré d'herbes fraîches et barrière contre les insectes et la chaleur mode d'emploi mélanger une bonne poignée avec de l'eau et étaler une couche chaque semaine. I choose sustainable lifestyle so I don't need a luxury, I don't need a big car, I don't need AC in the house. Yeah. Whatever I have I I'm comfortable with that. If I can sleep on the land with the mosquito net, I am very happy with that. I don't need a bed. So I don't want to do that. I am happy with that in living a natural way in land without light, without electricity. Maybe sometimes without phone. <coughs> so and in city life shit I really don't like because there is so much pollution first of all and so much noisy. I like peace and that's why I decide to stay in the village with the family life and with the family. Life. Après notre étape dans le Maharashtra, on a cherché à rencontrer ceux pour qui être connecté avec le cycle alimentaire commence dès le plus jeune âge. Bienvenue à Sarang ou l'école de la vie. Ok, je suis Gautam Sarang, je suis 36. Je viens de la Palaka district de Kerala. Et ce est un village sur un hilltop. Je suis venu ici, sur ce hilltop, je suis venu ici quand j'étais 3. Et cette entière région était un barren land. My parents uh, chose this land for them to, like, you know, they wanted to uh, regenerate everything. They wanted to regenerate a forest and uh, they wanted to uh, 
regenerate the soil also water so within 100 years we destroyed all the all the natural resources technology came very fast and we began to use uh, the natural resources very fast so that what happened constructions are growing in one side the other side uh, this is we are destroying the natural resources mm -hmm. these are the part of our education mm -hmm. because we can write hundred thousands of books but if somebody are not going to approach the book it will remain there and the knowledge is remain there without using it Euh, comme un cycle. Donc quand on va aux toilettes, on voit la nature ce qui appartient à la nature. Et, euh, et donc voilà l'idée c'est que tout ce qu'on mange passe par notre corps, ensuite il est évacué euh, par, euh, par en bas et, euh, et, et ce qui sort de nous revient à la, à la terre. Et ensuite euh, cette, euh, cette terre devient hyper fertile et nourrit les arbres qui eux donnent de, plus de feuilles. Et les feuilles séchées sont collectées pour euh, être mises sur, le, dans les plantations, euh, sur les plantations dans le jardin pour, euh, du coup, pour, euh, pour avoir une meilleure terre. Voilà, on a fini notre construction. Maintenant, il est l'heure de poser la dernière pierre à l'édifice et d'inaugurer notre tour. So, we use uh, mulching as one technique uh, that we found in nature. Like, you know, if you look around in the forest, you will see all the foliage uh, comes down on the on the topsoil and it keeps a cover and under the cover there are microorganisms uh, and things like that work and they basically uh, keep on developing the soil in a forest so we just adopted that idea into our farm so we put mulch and let nature grow soil under it so we avoid um, a lot of irrigation uh, we uh, let the let the microorganisms grow and multiply and we basically tell I mean we let nature regrow our soil and in the farm <coughs> where it was completely barren and it was abandoned now we have like around two feet of good topsoil and it is very healthy so we um, we do only traditional seeds because you know traditional seeds are really strong and they are um, like you know strong in the sense if your uh, seeds are not really strong then you have to support it with chemicals and you know fertilizers and all that which basically weakens your system i mean your body system so we don't want to do that we uh, go like you know to different farms and our friends we collect all the traditional seeds and actually we had a lot of seeds here this is from the tribes okay. atapadi tribes mm -hmm. but what happens no tribes are cultivating this thing Government provide uh, money and everything to them, so they left the agriculture. Uh, these indigenous seeds are belongs to the tribes, or they are keeping the they were ke keeping the. So the one thing, if you are thinking about the sustainability of agriculture as well as food, we have to collect all this. Uh, seeds and we have to protect. Mm -hmm. yes. This is our our um, um, uh, responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> mm. And on a healthy soil uh, with healthy seeds, we can grow healthy food. And it is important that you know you have healthy food so that you know you have a healthy body and mind. Knowledge about food is. Also, you know, part of our education. Lord, it don't leave me all by myself. Lord, it don't leave me all by myself. Lord, it don't leave me all by myself.
education is happening all around all the time so it doesn't have to be limited to an institution or a or a particular space and time and place and things like that and everybody can teach the youngsters something or the other if you are actually led to study these things will fall in place but if you are made to study everything becomes tough those things don't come to education because you know people are not considering that as part of life so my parents felt like <coughs> it should be about survival and it should be about living and letting others live any kids you know they should have enough space they should have clean water and they should have clean air and they should have enough mud to play with and enough trees to climb on and enough life to see because if you really see life then it, that will make you really confident so we don't we didn't want our kids to miss that chance uh, education actually should happen in the entire society where everything right from growing food or cooking food or making clothes or uh, making shelters or houses or structures everything so whatever is actually happening in the society Uh, education should be part of it. How dare you? Education should address all these connections. So it should not be about you know uh, about competition or you know how much more mark you are getting or you know the you are the only first rank uh, and things like that. It's not about a very small amount of people winning. and all the other people lose it it's about every each individual finding their own self and also finding their role in the society and doing that job properly and uh, i work as a freelance web developer for making money but you know otherwise i am a husband i am a son i am a brother and i am interested in art uh, architecture and social issues as well i feel like you know we have to, there are so many issues in the society so we should do something about it On était venu chercher une école alternative, mais à la place des bancs et des cahiers, on a trouvé des champs, des cabanes dans les arbres, une cuisine, mais surtout une famille où le savoir se transmet de génération en génération. Or you know, if you are interested in kids, please be a parent and at least you know let one child you know grow in a Uh, in a, in a, in a way where he or she can experience freedom the actual true meaning of freedom uh, and be a parent who is not you know too much worried about future and all that because you know future is never in our control that you know life can be very simple and a simple life can be very much enjoyable and very happy one
see that there is a, there's a lot of disconnect uh, amongst people across the world. Uh, they have lost their sensitivity. They have lost their humanity. So I think this is this this is a reflection of how far we have come away from nature and from us. <laughs> I think it's high time we all wake up and it all it starts from understanding the environment and nature in your area and just to have your eyes and ears open, go out uh, in whatever green spaces are available in your vicinity and that will tell you, that will tell you what uh, is the strength of that land. We have all learned to run fast. So maybe it's time to slow down.